For the readers who love Disaster Days by Rebecca Behrens comes a new adventure to curl up with this winter. Alone in the Woods follows Alex and Jocelyn. They've been best friends forever, but it's the summer before eighth grade and their friendship is changing. They're growing apart and things are really weird between them. Jocelyn hopes that they can set things right before they start school. They both go on their annual joint family camping trip to the backwoods of Wisconsin. Things don't go as planned. The tube that they're sharing on the river tears, and they end up separated from their families. With almost no supplies, stranded wearing bathing suits and water shoes, this is where their dramatic journey begins. As tense days and nights pass, they will need to mend their friendship and work together to survive all that they endure. Told in alternating perspectives and flashbacks of the summer, Alone in the Woods is a survival story, but also explores the strong emotions of how friendships change. Beasts and Beauty by Soman Chainani. This is a group of short stories based on fairy tales. Forget what you think you know about your favorite fairy tales. Soman Chinani takes 12 of these tales, like Rapunzel, Peter Pan, and Beauty and the Beast, and twists them in such a way you don't see the end coming. These tales honor the original Grimm stories, and some go even darker. What if Ursula wasn't an evil sea witch? What if Hansel and Gretel didn't take place in Germany, but instead was Rishi and Lakshmi from Baga Purana in India. Some tales are quite short and others are a bit longer. Do not read these and expect a Disney ending for you will be sorely disappointed. I really enjoyed reading this book, these twisted fairy tales, and the art is really cool too. I want to tell you all about a graphic novel that I really enjoyed called The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag. Morgan has a secret. She can't wait to escape from the perfect little island town where she lives. But for now, she's just struggling through her everyday life, trying to have a normal day at home, get through high school, avoid her younger brother as much as she can, and stick with a group of friends who Morgan feels like don't really know her at all because Morgan really has a lot of secrets. And her biggest one, which she hasn't told anyone, is that she might actually like girls, a secret she feels like she has to keep hidden from everyone in her life or risk them rejecting her. And then there's Kelty, a mysterious girl who saves Morgan from almost drowning, who seems like she came right out of a dream. Except she is real. And okay, maybe she is a little bit embarrassing, but with Kelty around, suddenly life on the island doesn't feel quite so stifling anymore. But Kelty has some secrets of her own, and as the two girls' feelings for each other start to grow, their secrets find their way to the surface, whether the two girls are ready or not. The Girl from the Sea is a standalone graphic novel with beautiful artwork and an amazing story that will pull at your heartstrings and keep you wanting to know what happens next. Plus, if you enjoyed this story, you might want to check out the rest of Molly Knox Ostertag's work, such as her other graphic novel series, The Witch Boy. I hope you enjoy. Can you imagine leaving your home and friends forever with only a small bag of your belongings? In a house without walls, that is what happens to Sophia when the civil war in Syria forces her family to leave their home in Damascus. Life in Damascus had been comfortable for Safiya and her older brother, Tarek. They had a nice apartment with their own bedrooms, plenty of food to eat, a maid to clean and do laundry, and enough money for nice clothes and special treats. But their accommodations with distant cousins in Azraq, Jordan, are much more rustic and modest, and money is very tight. Syria is in the Middle East and borders the countries of Turkey, Lebanon, Iraq, and Jordan. These maps show Syria's location in relation to the United States and Safiya's Syrian home in Damascus and her new home in Azraq, Jordan. 
Safiya also has a twin sister, Sara. Safiya and Sara were separated when they were infants and their mother died. Sara needed special medical attention in America, so Safiya's aunt and uncle took her to America and never returned to Syria. The aunt and uncle adopted Sara and she grew up in America. As Safiya tries to adjust to her new life in Jordan, she aches to have the relationship she has always imagined with her twin, so she hatches a plan to make it happen. Will Safiya's plan work, or will the day-to-day -day struggles of her new life make it impossible? In a house without walls, Safiya's family is lucky to be able to live on land owned by family, but many Syrians fleeing violence and persecution end up in a refugee camp. As I read Safiya's story, I wondered if I would be able to meet the challenges of refugee life. How do you think you would manage? If you are in the mood for a book that will make you smile and laugh out loud, you will enjoy Gary Paulson's How to Train Your Dad. Carl is a 12-year-old boy who lives with his dad and his dog, Carol, in a trailer off the grid. They grow their own vegetables and own chickens and pigs. They barter for all services, and they recycle everything. Carl loves his dad, but with junior high approaching, in his very first crush on a girl named Peggy, he's starting to get really embarrassed by him. Carl thinks if he doesn't get new clothes and shoes that she will never notice him. So one day while getting a bag of discounted puppy food, he finds a puppy training pamphlet in the bag and he gets an idea. Carl and his best friend Pooter modify the training and secretly try and change Carl's dad's behavior. Changing your dumpster diving, recycling dad is much different than training a puppy, but he gives it his very best shot. Will Carl impress Peggy? Will his dad figure out he's being trained? Read to find out and prepare to laugh out loud. I Know Your Secret by Daphne Benedis Grab. Imagine if you have a deep, dark secret, something that no one, not your parent or even your best friend, knows about you. Something that you plan to carry with you forever. But then one day, out of nowhere, someone reveals that they know your secret and they plan to expose you. What would you do? For four seventh graders, this is the reality. Owen, Gemma, Ali, and Todd don't know each other very well, but they're all brought together when they receive the same awful email. Someone is threatening to make their secrets public if they don't comply with a list of tasks. The next day at school, after receiving the email, the four students have to meet in the janitor's closet and they're texted a very bizarre list of instructions to follow. No one knows what is going on, but it is very clear that the blackmailer is setting up for something huge to happen at the end of the day school assembly. These four students are willing to do as they're told to keep their secrets, even from each other. But just how far will they go? I had so many questions while reading this book. Will they ever tell an authority figure? Are their secrets really that bad? And what exactly is motivating this blackmailer? Owen, Gemma, Allie, and Todd have some really tough decisions to make. And they may just have to end up trusting each other if they're going to make it through this day. This was a very quick read for anyone who loves mysteries or thrillers. Ninety Six Miles by J. L. Esplin is a book about two brothers, John and Stu. It takes place during a hot summer in the outback of Nevada. Their dad is away on a business trip and the power goes out. It's a massive electrical outage with no word that the power will be back on anytime soon. John and Stu's neighbor who has been watching out for them, has to leave. He thinks John and Stu's dad will be home tomorrow, so he feels certain that the two brothers will be okay alone for one night. But dad doesn't return on the day he's supposed to, and weeks go by with no power. John and Stu aren't bothered by 
the fact that their dad is not home, for they have a large supply of food and water, until something happens and they lose everything. Now John is scared and Stu thinks he's going to die. John and Stu need to walk 96 miles through the desert for help from friends. Why not go to a friend's house who lives closer? They don't have a choice. They have to go to Brighton Ranch. Under ordinary circumstances, walking 96 miles through the hot desert would be difficult but circumstances are not ordinary for the two of them, and the walk is harder than either one of them could have ever imagined. Read 96 Miles to see how John and Stu struggle to survive, all the cunning things they have to do, how they cope with the unexpected, and the twist that you didn't see coming. How will John get them to Brighton Ranch safely? And why does Stu think he is not going to make it? Hi guys, it's Miss Sarah from the Lucy Robbins Wells Library. I wanna tell you guys about one of my recommendations for seventh and eighth grade readers. And that is the book Starfish by Lisa Phipps. Ever since Ellie wore a whale swimsuit and made a big splash at her fifth birthday party, she has been bullied about her weight, both at home and at school. In order to survive and to cope, Ellie, who is now 11 years old, tries to live by her self-enforced fat girl rules. No cannonballs, no splashing, no making waves. You don't deserve to be seen or heard. To take up room, to be noticed. Make yourself small. In order to cope, she often goes to her safe space, her swimming pool, where she feels weightless in a fat-obsessed world. In the water, she can stretch herself out like a starfish and take up all the room she wants. It's the only place where she can get away from her mother's hurtful comments, who thinks criticizing Ellie's weight will motivate her to diet. Of course it bothers Ellie, but her spirited self-talk helps her get through her each and every day, along with the support from her dad and her new friend Catalina, in Catalina's family. And with their support, Ellie might finally be able to cast aside the fat girl rules and starfish in real life by unapologetically being her own fabulous self. Lisa Phipps doesn't pull her punches in this book. Some of the things that are said and done to Ellie can be really upsetting to hear about as a reader. So I would definitely encourage anyone who reads this to discuss anything that might have made you feel uncomfortable while reading with a trusted adult. This was one of my favorite books I read this year. I love the use of free verse poetry to tell Ellie's story. This book makes you feel a lot of things and really encourages us to consider how we treat each other every day, especially when you read the author's note at the end of the story and you realize that everything that was said and done to Ellie is something that the author, Lisa Phipps, has had said or done to her while growing up. So I hope you give this story a try and I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes. I deserve to be seen, to be noticed, to be heard, to be treated like a human. I starfish. There's plenty of room for each and every one of us in this world.